the historic bells of Albany City Hall. Welcome to Albany Street, a public affairs presentation of Albany Broadcasting. In the summer of 2009, welcome to Albany Street. I'm Joe Condon as we get closer and closer to uh, the start of the uh, 2009 uh, racing season. Another wonderful weekend for uh, swimming and picnicking in the uh, capital region. And taking uh, time out from swimming and picnicking and uh, playing golf or tennis are two uh, guests today. First of all, we have with us uh, Denise Harlow, who is the CEO of the New York State Community Action Association. They are a statewide organization that is headquartered in Gilderland, New York. And also with us is uh, Nancy Rice. She is the Director of Communications and Development for the Commission on Economic Opportunity of the uh, Greater Capital Region. And Nancy is located in uh, Troy, New York, on the other side of the Hudson. So nice to have you guys with us. Thank, Thank you. you. We're happy to be here. Okay. Denise Harlow, first of all, if you could tell us what the New York State Commission Community Action Association is all about, we'd appreciate that. Sure. We are the statewide association serving the needs of New York's 52 community action agencies. Uh, nationwide, there are close to 1,100 community action agencies, and their mission is to really help families move from economic insecurity to economic security helping families become independent and self-sufficient. Um, organizations run a variety of programs such as Head Start, provide weatherization assistance, provide emergency services, economic development, entrepreneurial services, first-time homebuyer programs, really ru runs the gamut of services that families in need might require. Now this is a very uh, tough time for uh, the economy and I'll, I'll use an example of something my wife and I encountered last week and we were over to uh, Pontusic Lake in Pittsfield, and there's this uh, restaurant where we pick up uh, food to get for uh, going on uh, a picnic, and the gentleman behind the counter owns the restaurant. I was very distressed because the woman who had just left had bought $40 worth of pizza for um, her daughter's birthday, and she had a scrape in the pocketbook to uh, get the remaining money and he was like don't worry about it don't worry about it. he was very upset and it turned out that her husband had a job with kb toys over there lost his job and they're going to have to leave the area and they're going to lose their house now that's not unique to pittsfield that's happening here in the capital region people like that here in the capital region and all over new york state how can you help them you gave a whole bunch of subjects on you know how you help people but how exactly can they go about getting your assistance especially like the family you're talking about, possibly have never had to access services before. They're finding themselves in a very unique situation, something that they've never experienced before. Our organizations are really perfectly suited for families who are experiencing problems for the first time like this. Our organizations are friendly, welcoming, respectful of families' concerns. They can call any of our community action agencies. There are agencies in Pittsfield, as well as throughout the capital region and here in New York, making the first phone call saying, I'd like to talk to someone. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my house. It may be going into foreclosure. Um, I'm having trouble putting food on the table this week. I can't make my utility payments. I'm afraid I'm going to get a, my first shutoff notice. This has never happened to me. Call our offices, call our agencies, come in and talk with a family development worker, someone who can really help strategize about where to start, how to manage um, diminishing resources, and potentially how to access programs and services that can help them sustain themselves during what could be a real crisis for an individual family. Okay, I've popped in your office in Gilderland, and I'm sitting down with uh, you or one of your assistants, and I explain to you, we'll, we'll use the example of uh, the family in Pittsfield. How, how are you going to help me? What are you going to do for me? Well, let's talk about what your concerns are. If you're scraping in the bottom of your pocketbook for change to, to help pay for a birthday party, and a birthday party is a very special event for all families, and, the, and parents will always scrape the bottom of the pocketbook regardless of their income streams to provide for their children. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how you're having trouble. Are you having trouble feeding your family? Let's talk about the services that are available. We know food stamps are an option for families, and more and more working families are accessing food stamps every day. They don't have quite the stigma that they used to in terms of they're not physical stamps any longer. Mm -hmm. What, let's talk about accessing services so you can bring more resources and more money into your household to help you pay some basic bills. Okay, I've lost my job so I don't have a health insurance plan anymore. How can you, will you pay my health bills? 
can't necessarily, I can't pay your health bills, but I can talk to you about what does your income look like today? Do you qualify for Medicaid? Do you qualify for Child Health Plus for your children to get health insurance? And if you perhaps you do qualify for those services, who do we need to talk with? Can I go with you to the Department of Social Services to help you apply for services? Am I a facilitated enroller for Child Health Plus? And can I help you enroll in health, health insurance for your children here today? Perhaps if your children are eligible for Head Start services, our Heart Start services are providing some basic health care, dental care, mental health care for children. Perhaps it's another way to help us give you, your children and your family, health care services. It really can, coming in and talking with someone at our organization who has an understanding of the breadth of the type of services, it really is a complex system out there to access some basic human services. And our folks are really well trained and have been doing this work for a number of years to access. Um, what about my, need. would you help me with my mortgage or my rent? We can talk to you about um, how do we manage um, help, helping you stay out of foreclosure. We work very closely with some legal services programs that can navigate the legal system when it comes to home foreclosure. We have services that can possibly help you meet uh, a rental payment or a mortgage payment to help get you through perhaps what's going to be a very difficult month for you particularly. What do we need to do to talk about long-term financial stability around budgeting, financial literacy? Perhaps we can help you manage and find new housing. Um, we do have programs that offer emergency housing and transitional housing. So it really, again, is a variety of services. Just join us. Program is Albany Street. I'm Joe Condon. We are delighted to have with us uh, Denise Harlow, who is the CEO of the New York State uh, Community Action Association. They're located in Gilderland. And across the mighty Hudson River in the city of Troy is uh, Nancy Rice. And Nancy Rice is with the commission on uh, economic opportunity for the uh, greater capital region. Now, uh, Nancy and Denise, you both were saying that you guys sort of work in conjunction with one another. Uh, Nancy Rice, how is your organization able to help people in the capital region in similar situations like we've described? Joe, we're really one of the agencies um, that's located in Rensselaer County and we provide the services to the families um, you know really the the families would access their community action agency not necessarily the association where Denise is working so the family should really reach out to their community action agency within their own county and we provide the services to the families we kind of wrap ourselves around them try to help them find the resources that they need we provide services um, as Denise was saying, financial literacy, um, help them figure out how to better budget their money so that they aren't coming up short at the end of the month. And then when they are, help them. We have food pantry. We have um, WIC, which many families are eligible for and they may not know that they're eligible for, and that, that will help them provide the nutritional food that is needed for their family. Are you finding uh, what all not-for-profits seem to be finding that um, because of the economy there are less donations coming in or it's tougher to get grants but at the same time because of the situation there is more of a need than ever before of your services I, either one of you I'm not sure who wants to answer that one we oh, are we are also we are finding that we are in a unique situation we have several programs that are um, very well funded and we we really need customers to, to use the services. We have programs such as weatherization, which has um, been funded by stimulus money. And we really need people who need their homes weatherized. If they um, are a family of four, making as much as $45,000 a year, they are eligible for these services. And we can help them make their homes uh, more energy efficient, which is then going to help them with their budget. Okay. I. I'm not trying to be wise here, but when you say help them and with weatherization, does that mean like you would send a construction crew over and weatherize? Yes, what we do oh, is really? we start with we start with an energy audit. We go into the home. Your phone's going to ring tomorrow. Oh, we hope so. <laughs> we we hope so. Uh, we start with an energy audit and we go through the home, find out where the air is leaking. We check out all of the major systems and then they make a determination of what can be done in that home to make it more energy efficient so that that family is then going to save money um, on their energy costs. What is the, and maybe you don't want to answer this, what do you consider to be the most efficient way to heat your uh, 
home in the Northeast, solar, gas, uh, electric, oil. Well, I think it comes down to how well your home is tight in terms of being, where's your energy escaping? And how can okay. you be energy efficient, regardless of what choices you may have available to you? If you're a renter, you may have fewer choices anyway in terms of how to heat your home. It's, it's how tight are the seals around the windows? What is going to be the energy escaping through the roof if you don't have um, proper insulation? Um, are you managing the proper light fixtures and, and light bulbs? Are there other ways that you can conserve energy? There are other ways to be efficient, regardless of what type of energy is coming into your home to uh, run the heater, run the run the power, whatever. And we also offer a lot of education. We educate people about simply turning off lights and what they can do to to save on energy. Now, New York State uh, on July 1st enacted, I think, a 2% uh, service fee or something on uh, our national grid bills, which is going to send everybody, uh, and I guess that fee is going to be there until 2014. That really hurts the person that is just trying to, you know, get by and pay their rent and feed the kids and all of a sudden heat their home and you get this additional charge. Is there anything, well, we just had the Senate that just, is is there anything that can help the poor people? I mean, it just seems so sad what's going on in this country. Well, and we do caution policymakers when they look at establishing flat fees like that um, across the board that they do have such the impact on low-income families or at a greater percentage, at a higher rate. We testified at a hearing with National Grid about raising rates and talked about now is not the time to raise rates on low-income families. A small 20 to $30 increase in the family's heating bill is dramatic. It's literally milk. And, gr and cereal on the breakfast table. It's literally lunch that's going to school with the kids. Well, this rate increase is not coming from National Grid. It's no, coming it's from New York free. State. And uh, it's got to gotta take a break. The program is Albany Street. I'm Joe Condon. Nancy Rice and Denise Harlow are our guests. They're uh, both from the uh, New York State Community Action Association of Gilderland. Actually, that's where um, Denise is from. And uh, Nancy is from the Commission on Economic opportunity of the greater capital region and yes folks i did forget my glasses so that's bad. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment The historic bells of Albany City Hall return us to Albany Street, a public affairs presentation of Albany Broadcasting. Summer in the city. Welcome back. I'm Joe Cotton. We are delighted to have with us today. We have with us Nancy Rice, who is the Director of Communications and Development for the Commission on Economic Opportunity of the Greater Capital Region. And uh, Nancy is located in Troy. And also with us is Denise Harlow, who is the CEO of the New York State uh, Community Action Association, and they are located in uh, Gilderland. Nancy Rice, for our listeners who have just joined us, could you explain what the Commission on Economic Opportunity of the Greater Capital Region is? Sure. We are a community action agency, and we provide services for uh, low-income families that are... Um, needing a little bit of a help and so families can come to us whether it has to do with that they are uh, not quite making ends meet and they need food or if they are having problems uh, making their rent or their mortgage they can come see us and we will uh, help them with resources and help them with services so that they can get through a difficult time. Now you are uh, located in Troy but it's my understanding that uh, you have offices throughout the capital region? We have offices throughout uh, Rensselaer County. Okay, just so, but somebody could drive across the Dunn Memorial Bridge into uh, Rensselaer County from Albany County and take advantage of your services? 
most of our services are for Rensselaer County residents. Stay out, Albany. We do have many services that do cross over. However, there is a community action agency in every single county in New York State. Okay. So these services are, are provided, and people can um, access these services no matter where they live. Okay, so that, that's what I meant. In other words... Um, when I said you have, I was referring to the umbrella. There are okay, a, yes, a, okay, yes, that, yes. Okay, that's what I meant there. Yeah, no, I'm with the community, with Commission on Economic Opportunity, and we're in Rensselaer County. Okay, but there, but there are offices in Albany and Schenectady and yes. Saratoga, Amsterdam. Yep, every mm -hmm. single county. Albany Community Action Partnership, Saratoga EOC, Colmont Community Action. Rensselaer. Speaking of Detroit, Denise Harlow. <laughs> <laughs> who is the uh, CEO of the New York State Community Action Association. They are located in uh, Gilderland. Um, okay, Denise, for folks who just uh, joined us, would you explain what your uh, organization is all about? We're the statewide association serving the needs of all 52 community action agencies in New York State. There are close to 1,100 na nationally of community action agencies. We provide training, technical assistance, advocacy services on behalf of community action as well as low-income families in the state of New York. Now, if someone needed um, the assistance of uh, Nancy Rice or uh, Denise Harlow, what are uh, the first steps? Well, the first step is to, if you, if you are in Rensselaer County, certainly contacting uh, CEO would be the appropriate first step and mm -hmm. just explaining to the person who answers the phone um, how you need assistance. If you're online, you can go to our website, which has a listing and a member map. You can click on a map and find out about the community action agency in your county. Our website is www.nyscaaonline.org. Now, this is such an important topic. Either uh, Nancy or Denise, is there anything that I may not have asked you or something that we talked about uh, briefly that you might want to elaborate on a little bit more for listeners so they can understand uh, your services? Well, our services are certainly growing in terms of accessibility. As families become, uh, as the economy continues to, to shrink and families find themselves in more and more, more difficulty, we just want to encourage folks who perhaps wouldn't have thought that they were eligible for services. There has been an increase in eligibility for a number of our services through the Stimulus Act. So as Nancy was saying, a family earning up to $45,000 a year, a family of four, can really come in and meet with our folks or talk about their, their needs and really begin to access some emergency services. So again, it's, it's really wanting to stress to families who may not have ever accessed services but find themselves on, on the brink or feeling that they're in crisis, contact us early, reach out to us before you, you're, you fall into crisis. And even when you are in crisis, please give us a call. Right. We also have many services that you don't have to be income eligible for. Like what? Well, the, our food pantry, if there's a month that you're just having difficulty, you do not have to be income eligible for the food pantry. We feed anyone who is hungry. So technically, if Donald Trump's in town and he wanted a sandwich, he could go over to you and legally he could have a sandwich. Uh, he is not a Rensselaer resident, I don't believe. <laughs> oh, you got, okay, if, <laughs> if Donald has a house in Rensselaer, and he may, he may. <laughs> seriously, someone he could take seriously, it. we feed anyone who comes to our food pantry. Okay, and what are the other services that there's no economic uh, criteria for? Most of our services, we are looking at um, eligibility, but the food pantry, you do not have to be eligible. Um, counseling is available. Okay, and again. That is offered to all. I believe it, it is on a sliding scale basis, so okay. there, there may be a slight payment for someone who doesn't qualify for the income levels. But really, if people are struggling, they, it's worth it to, to reach out and to find out if there are services that they're eligible for. Now, both of you have uh, made reference to the economic stimulus helping you, uh, your organizations out. And my understanding right now is nationally only about 10% of the economic stimulus is uh, in place. So are you folks expecting better things financially for your organizations? Nancy, I'll start with you. We are. We have several programs that are going to be getting stimulus money. And we have weatherization, which is why we, we are encouraging people to call us. And to call us now and not wait until it gets cold. Um, we also have our Youth Build program. It's another program that is going to uh, get some of the stimulus money. 
so we are able to offer a program this year. This year will be fully funded and we'll have a program for 30 youth between the ages of 16 to 24. And this is a, a great program. It is one of the most successful programs in transforming uh, youth lives. They, this is for 16 to 24 year olds who have dropped out of school and we assist them in getting their GED and also they learn uh, leadership skills and also construction skills. Nancy Rice and Denise Harlow are our guests. Okay, Denise, uh, same question for you. Are you expecting uh, stimulus money to uh, enhance certain programs you have or bring certain programs to your organization that are in limbo right now? For our agencies, we're looking at eight, close to $87 million in the Community Services Block Grant, which provides emergency services coming into the state of New York. That means a little bit over a million dollars coming into the four counties um, here in the Capital District um, in that kind of emergency services program money. We're looking at weatherization. The state's getting close to $400 million statewide for weatherization services. We're looking at our organizations um, accessing one, uh, WIA, Workforce Investment Act, resources for employment and training services. So those monies have already kind of hit the streets. Um, CSBG, Community Services, Block Grant Emergency Services, weatherization, and Head Start have yet to hit. But um, our agencies are anticipating, they're in the midst of planning, they're in the midst of ramping up. There's a short time frame. The president's been very clear that we want this money out, we want this money spent. So our agencies are really kind of waiting we we have work plans in place we're kind of waiting for the money to hit and people will start running and and working on getting that money out into the community now head start i know is something which uh, started during uh lyndon johnson's administration lots of times we hear phrases or words but we don't exactly know what the programs are either either one of you want to just go over what head start is and how uh especially in the summertime families can take advantage of it well, Head Start is um, a program that will serve uh, four and five year olds on um, um, preschool services with okay. high quality educators in the classroom. But beyond classroom services, the beauty of Head Start it really is built to give low income families and their children a, a, a head a start for, ch for, for school. So there's wraparound services like health care, like dental care, like home visiting. Um, mental health counseling, a variety of programs that can really help the whole family. It's a whole family-centered approach. And in Head Start, what comes out of the, um, the in the 1960s is there's really a parental involvement component that makes Head Start unique from any other early childhood education piece. Parents volunteer in the classroom. Um, parents volunteer on policy councils that make real governance decisions about how program dollars are spent in Head Start. So it both prepares the child for school academically, it prepares them physically, and it empowers the parents really to take a leadership role in the education of their children. So when those children enter school in the school districts, those parents are even more prepared to be ready to, to navigate that educational system, which can be challenging from a, from a parent's perspective. And there's also early Head Start, which is six weeks to three, year, three right. years age, <clears throat> and uh, a lot of developmental screening is done there, which is, everyone knows how um, important it is that they're screened and any needs are identified early because then it uh, mitigates the, the uh, issues when they get older. During this uh, tough time that we're going through um, internationally, nationally, statewide, and locally, um, Nancy and uh, Denise, from your points of view, what do you think is the biggest problem that we have to address now in our country to turn this whole mess around? How do you think we can do it? Jobs are really going to be the key. Um, we can provide job training. We can provide employment wraparound services. We can help stabilize families. But until there are jobs for trained folks to move into that pay a living wage, that pay for... Um, the needs of a family um, until we see that kind of upswing again in those living wage jobs being created, or at this point, any jobs being created, uh, I, that's a real concern that we're seeing. There's a lot of workforce development happening, but we need places for those folks to go to get jobs. And I think that that's one of the more um, exciting benefits of the stimulus money is that we are really creating jobs because of the growth in the program, we are able to hire several more people. We've hired, already hired seven people in our weatherization uh, program and we are looking at hire, hiring additional people. And uh, Head Start, we have applied for additional money. We're hoping to, to open a new Head Start in southern Rensselaer County in the Nassau area. And again, I think that we're looking at possibly another additional 35 people 
to hire there. So this is really going to create jobs. Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, joining us. Any final uh, comment before we wrap it up? No, I think I do want to make a plug for 211. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a, um, is it national? It's, uh, national? it's uh, statewide now, and it's also statewide Massachusetts. Okay. It's funny, I'm doing a show on that tomorrow. Really great. <laughs> okay. People can call 211 to find out who their service provider is in the area. Okay. Nancy Rice and Denise Harlow. I want to thank you guys so much for uh, joining us. I'm Joe Condon. And go dial uh, 211 right now, and uh, you'll find out what it's all about. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.